Good afternoon. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video here on folium of Descartes. Folium is a Latin word which means leaf. We're looking here at a specific algebraic curve which is invented or discovered by this French mathematician Descartes and we're going to examine it in terms of implicit differentiation, a specific application with regards to that. The equation is right here x cubed plus y cubed minus 3axy equals 0 where specifically the a value can be inputted in terms of 1 and your equation becomes x cubed plus y cubed minus 3xy equals 0. You can take the 3xy on the other side and you'll have x cubed plus y cubed equals 3xy. Our task in this specific video is to determine once we've done the graph where on this curve or on this loop can we generate a tangent line such that it would have a slope of a zero. We're looking for where on that loop, the folium of Descartes, we can generate a horizontal tangent line because horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Let's show you the graph of this. There's an oblique asymptote which right here has y equals minus x minus one equation. This here is a minus one comma zero and this here is a point a zero comma minus one. These are points on your oblique asymptote. The curve comes like this. It goes to the origin, it loops around then it goes back to the origin and it loops away and it drives away as you can see that right there that specific loop is called the folium and it is latin for leaf we have to determine where on this leaf we can generate a horizontal tangent line visually when you're looking right here on the top you could picture a horizontal line form right here perhaps that's a good point and perhaps there's another point we have to see all the possible points on this specific folium where we can generate a horizontal tangent line the technique to do is to utilize implicit differentiation and we'll start with that you'll do this, you'll have 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx. We don't have to elaborate on this technique because we know how to do implicit differentiation. Here we have to use a product rule. y times the derivative of x plus x times the derivative of that y. And in all instances, you're basically solving for dy dx. You have 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx is equal to 3y plus 3x dy dx. Get all of these dy dx items on one side. You'll have 3y squared dy over dx minus 3x dy over dx is equal to take everything else on the other side. 3y minus 3x squared. Isolate the dy dx. You can do that. And here you'll have a 3y squared minus 3x is equal to 3y minus 3x squared. Solve for this dy dx which is basically synonymous for that derivative with respect to y and let's just use that. That is equal to 3y minus 3x squared over 3y squared minus 3x. In all instances here you can cancel out the 3's by multiplying everything by 1 over 3 in the numerator and denominator. Essentially you divide everything by 3 and you can eliminate the 3's. You'll have y minus x squared and you'll have y squared minus x. This right here is your implicitly derived derivative factor which I'm putting out for you right over here from which we will do our determination of that horizontal tangent line all right that right there is the all important factor we need and now we will erase everything and make some space because we have to determine where on this loop we can generate a line which has a slope of zero a horizontal tangent line so let's do that you have right there that derived factor y minus x squared over y squared minus x if normally when you do your derivative factor you place an x or a y value or both depending on if it's explicitly derived or implicitly derived derivative and you plug that in you get a good numerical output which usually represents your derivative and that specific numerical derivative represents the slope of the tangent line at that specific point. We know all of this should equal to zero because that's what we're trying to determine. You can take this expression right there and take it across so you'll have y minus x squared is equal to zero and then you'll have y is equal to x squared. So this right here gives us a good expression from which we can do something. You have this expression right here. All you gotta do is plug it right here in places of y. You'll have x cubed plus y cubed, but y is x squared and then you have a cube of that is equal to 3x times x squared, which is the y value here. You have x cubed plus x to the sixth is equal to 3x cubed. Bring everything on one side. x cubed minus 3x cubed is a minus 2x cubed plus x to the 6 is equal to 0. Isolate an x cubed. You'll have x cubed. You'll have a minus 2 plus x cubed is equal to 0. From this, you can generate two values. x is equal to 0. That's one value. And then you can solve for this. x cubed is equal to 2 and x is equal to cube root of 2. 
These are two values for which you've generated in terms of x. But these same values can now be plugged back in over here and you can solve for the y. If x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. That's one value of y. If x is equal to cube root of 2, y is equal to the square of that, which is 2 to the 1 or 3 square, and that's 2 to the 2 or 3, which is the cube root of 4. That's another value. You've got cube root of 4 in terms of y. You can marry these up. You can have one coordinate pair 0, 0, and the other one is cube root of 2 and cube root of 4. These are my x, y, x, and y values. So based on this mathematical procedure here, we've determined at coordinate 0, 0, we can generate a tangent line on that folium, which will be horizontal, having a slope of 0. And at this coordinate pair, we can generate another tangent line, which will have a slope of 0, a horizontal tangent line. This right here looks like a good value. This right here does not look like a good value because I can literally put 0, 0 here in places of x and y, and I'll zero out the denominator and I'll get an undefined. But I can put these values right here in place of x and y and I'll nowhere near get it undefined in the denominator. I'll get some good value on the top which will be 0, but I won't zero out the denominator and it'll be good. So definitely placing 0, 0 right in here in the implicitly derived derivative will not give you a 0 in terms of a tangent line slope. It'll give you an undefined slope because that would very well likely form a vertical tangent line. This right here will give you a situation where you have zero in the numerator and some good value here in the denominator and here you'll have a slope which is zero and a horizontal line will generate. Why is this giving us a problem? I'll show you why right over here. If you look at two representations and you have your oblique asymptote here in both instances, if you look at the curve coming from right here on the top going through the origin and it loops around and it just stops right over there and from here at the origin if you develop a horizontal tangent line, well you can develop one and it's horizontal. All right, here we are seeing there's a horizontal tangent line come about. But if you look at this loop, the folium come from this bottom part, go to the origin, loop around, and then stop over here. Now if you look at this, you develop a tangent line to this point, it ends up being vertical tangent line. Here you know the slope is undefined because vertical lines have no slope, they're undefined, which is why we're seeing this right over here. You have a situation here where at the origin, depending on how your loop is formed and terminated, which you cannot do because the loop must continue. Anyhow, based on how you look at it, you'd have two tangent lines formed. One is horizontal, one is vertical. That sort of ambiguity or that sort of issue or there creates a situation such that it is unacceptable. For a derivative to exist clearly at a specific point on a curve, you must have a single derivative output arise, a single derivative factor in terms of a good numerical representation. You, you cannot have two separate tangent lines arise at a given point and say that it is an acceptable because that's not allowed. It's just like you having a limit determination for a specific point but you have two values, one from the right, one from the left, and you know right and the left side do not equate to one another, hence you can say that limit does not exist. Just like that, you must have a clear determination here, there must be no ambiguity. Either you should have only one style of a tangent line or you should have no tangent line. Here you have a situation with two tangent lines and it's unacceptable. So for this specific folium of Descartes right over here, this equation, we can find one clear point where we end up having a tangent line which is zero and that right there is this coordinate pair here, cube root two, cube root four. 0, 0 leads to ambiguity, you have a horizontal and a vertical tangent line arise which is not acceptable. It's just like you saying that for a function with a corner and a kink you're trying to determine a derivative. You cannot determine a derivative at the point of that corner or a kink because here as always the right hand and the left hand limits would never be equal. Therefore you cannot do a clear determination of a derivative. Just like that here at the origin you have this ambiguity. Therefore this right here must go out and only this exists as a point where the slope of a zero tangent line will exist and that right there must be our only answer. Cube root of 2, cube root of 4 in terms of x and y coordinates respectively for the folium of Descartes. And with that I end this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.